In this video, we're going to quickly learn how to set up a page in InDesign by choosing a canvas size and then adding columns to the pages. To do this in InDesign, click Create New. Now you can choose from print, web or mobile style canvases by clicking on the buttons at the top of this window. For this, we'll select print and then click view all presets. We can now see all of the different preset sized pieces of paper or canvases. The most common you'll be familiar with is printer paper, which is A4 and slightly larger is A3. I'm going to use A3. I can then set the orientation by choosing between portrait or landscape. For this, I'll choose landscape. You can always switch preview on at the bottom of the create new window to see how your page will look. If I switch between orientation uh, in portrait and landscape, you can see it change in real time. Select your orientation and then choose the number of pages that you want. I'm just going to use two pages. The check mark in facing pages will align the pages as if you were going to print them out if you were making a magazine or book. I don't need to do that in printing out two separate pieces of paper so I can uncheck facing pages. So I have an A3 canvas, landscape style and two pages in my project. When you're ready, click create. On the right hand side, we have the properties panel. We can switch by clicking the properties tab or the pages tab. If I click pages, I can see the pages in my project right now. The one in blue is page one. I can double click that and switch to page two. And you can see the gray bar at the side of the canvas switches up and down. So if I double click page one, you can see we're in page one. Double click page two, we're in page two. I can also switch between pages in the properties panel by going to the middle and then finding the page tab and switching between one and two here. For this project, let's say I wanted to have one main image on page one, so I wouldn't add any columns here. But on page two, I want to add columns. So I can switch to page two and then I can click the edit page button. Then I can click margins and columns. In this window, I can adjust the number of columns. Right now, I have one column, one large column. If I change this to two, I can split the page into two columns. Add the number two and then click OK. And you can see the page has been divided into two columns. I can change this further by clicking margins and columns again and changing this. If I wanted five columns, I could change the two to a five and then click OK. And now I have five columns. If you want to change the size between the columns on your page or you want to change the margins, you can also do this by going back to the margins and columns button. If I change the number in the gutter size and I increase the number, you can see the space between columns becomes larger. If I reduce the number, the space between columns becomes smaller. But I'm just going to leave this as it is at one point gutter. You can also change the margins, which is the size of the gap around the side of the page, by changing the margin settings at the top of this um, window. I can change the top and make the margin smaller or I can click on the up arrow to make it larger. You can experiment with the settings to find something that you're happy with. If you want to change them individually because right now they are both linked, the top and bottom, click on this little link button here and that stops the settings being all the same and you can start to change them individually. As long as the preview button is checked, you'll be able to see how your page looks in real time. If you make a mistake, simply click undo, or if you're changing it here with the preview, you can click cancel to undo any changes. 
to return back to the properties panel where we started off, simply click on the back button in the top right hand of the screen and you will come out of the edit page settings and you'll be back in the normal properties window where you started. And that's how you set up a page in InDesign.